for having us. We sure are tickled to be here. I mean, who am I kidding? I don't need a microphone. Um, <laughs> hopefully you guys all got to have some breakfast just to review the menu since that's our deal now that you've already eaten it. Do you want to say it or should I? Oh, sure. Um, I'll try and be as loud as Kelly. Um, so I made all the homemade Pop-Tarts this morning at four in the morning. Um, oh no, that wasn't. Uh, I just chain smoked and told her to go faster. Yeah. <laughs> about that's a, it's our shtick whip um, me another margarita no but we had um there was orange marmalade and dark chocolate pop tarts there was a ghetto with sharp cheddar and montgomery in sauce over top there was a strawberry jam and fresh basil with salt and pepper and then the last one was nutella and marshmallow fluff with graham cracker crumbs over top um and then honey cayenne bacon and fresh cherries and we started our company over a bowl of fresh cherries so i thought that was fitting um so also, I feel like the, probably the only reason we were ever able to do that rap is because we're, it's just the two of us right now. There's five of us total in our company, but. We're the only two in the building, so we get to pick right, what we exactly. say. Exactly. So, <laughs> so and we're going to wrap some more. Just to frame the dynamic for the rest of the morning, Caitlin and I are definitely sisters. I'm the much older version, not her mom. In fact, our um, parents are here, and if you, you would never pick out our mom as our mom because she's tiny and blonde, but my dad <laughs> looks, I look like him in a dress, and in fact, <laughs> he wore a flipping sweater vest and white shirt. <laughs> Alarming, we did not plan that, but it always happens. So, thanks for yes, coming, guys. Yes, thank you, guys. Um, so, we wanted to talk about how we have built a brand around ourselves, pretty much. Um, we don't sell anything, we just we literally started our company wanting to feed people and tell stories and talk and cook and all that good stuff. So we wrote down our biggest tips in terms of how to start a business around a brand that is yourself. So The brand that is your personality. Yes. Yes. Um, so first, we when we first started, it was six, ago on, six years ago on Mother's Day that we started. And Kelly and our other partner asked me to come over for a bowl of cherries, and I thought that that was it. Um, but they wanted to start a business called Cooking with Caitlin. They named it and had already bought the website, so I was already in. Um, <laughs> it's always important to Caitlin yes. that you guys know that because she wasn't like, holla, Cooking with Caitlin, let's right. do it, guys. Yeah. Um, but we sat down, and there were some things in retrospect that we said that were the most important to us that we didn't realize would be the basis of our business from now on. Um, and, when, and I think when you're starting a business, that is the most important thing, is to figure out what, what, is, what are you working towards, what is your end goal, all that stuff. So Just be very clear on who you are as an individual, a brand, and then also your long-term goals. goals. Yeah. yeah. Um, when we started, we thought we were just going to be caterers. We had no idea that. Um, this is where we would be with lots of lights and cameras. Um, so it was important to me as a caterer to never serve the same thing twice, to never limit what our clients can have from us, um, and to never own chafing dishes. We do not own a single chafing dish because um, that's where good food goes to perish. So um, <laughs> that's, those were the most important things to us, so, or to me. I should say that. Here, do you want to? That was important. Well, and then also, um, oh, fun. Hi, Margo. Hi. The, um, another, probably the biggest thing for us, too, was building our business around our family. And that, our families, our growing families that have grown through the years. Um, and that really has been like our, our guiding, um, guiding light was what I was thinking, but that's not right. But you get catch my drift, right? So, um, Along the way, like our kids, if we've delivered lunch to you, there's a good chance that our kids were in the, strapped into a five-point harness in the van when we got there. Um, and there was another adult in the car, surely. <laughs> but um, so that for us has been, you know, part of being true to ourselves and, and building our business. 
to our personality, that kind of thing. But it also means that it's been a slow moving process and we're working around swim meets last night and doctor's appointments later today, that kind of thing. Um, so another thing we were thinking is the long-term goal. So Caitlin's long-term goal has always been, I'm talking about oh, her, like she's not here, but. Well, I don't know when you're gonna stop. <laughs> oh. Um, my, well, I was the first person, or I feel like my generation is the first to grow up with the Food Network. Um, the best part of vacation was Yan Ken Cook being on cable television at the hotel, or at the house, and I've just grown up watching all these food celebrities, and it's kind of always been my overarching goal um, to be on Food Network, and that was always something that we were working towards. And when we started with a bowl full of cherries, there's no way that I would have been like, and then we're going to do the Food Network. But gradually, we, we implemented video onto our website, and then we started doing cooking live cooking demos and, and just continually taking baby steps towards our bigger goal. And thank goodness Paula Dean has created an opening for us. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens in um, this cold -ass honky. July. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's appropriate, right? <laughs> Hail Mary. <laughs> um, another um, thought. It's funny to be up here because by no means are we trying to act like we you know. know more. But we do. We are clear on our own personal personalities in building cooking with Caitlin. So this has been our experience. Um, not being afraid to delegate. So the three of us, um, Molly, Caitlin, and I started the business together. And along the way, we've had some really cool people join our team. and. We all, we really pride ourselves in sticking to what we know. So, Caitlin is very definitely creative, food, no, I mean. Well, I do all the cooking. All, anything that you've tasted has been completely homemade by me to the best of my ability. So, um, like homemade sausages, homemade breads, all that stuff. But then along that, I write the recipes and do the video demonstrations and all the food things. But um, I can't do it. I mean, I would just be handing out cookies if that was... We need Kelly and Molly and everybody else. So then Caitlin passes it on to me, and I do well shake hands and kiss babies and write it you out and push it out yeah. into the world, that kind of thing. Um, and then Molly is a really savvy business businesswoman. But anyway, this is something that we um, kind of pride ourselves in, the whole, like I said, stick to what you know kind of thing. Like, just don't be afraid to delegate and to bring in people who are better at what you do. For example, um, I'm looking for the ample guys. Yeah, the ample guys who we love, who are right behind this bright light. But um, Adam and Rob are here from from Ample, and they help. Well, they don't help. They make our site cool, and they are really talented. And we know that that is way beyond us. So we're so grateful to have them. But then along the way, we haven't been afraid to, um, especially with food in particular. Everybody's always willing to. Uh, share a meal so we've gotten to meet a lot of people that are doing a lot better than we are but just to like learn from them and become friends and align ourselves and different things like that um, Debbie is here from Girlfriendology and if it wasn't for Debbie we would have never started Foodies Night In our Twitter party that we host um, every Monday that has been an awesome amazing opportunity but Thank you, Debba. it's because yes um, it's because we knew that she knew more than we did and we wanted to be your friend and we fed her and sometimes so <laughs> Uh, and we got to work with that, so. Yeah. So then, um, okay, so we've got our, um, our overarching goal in place. We've got our conviction around our family and being true to ourselves and no flipping chafing dishes for the love of God. Um, and then we just feel like how, and I don't know that we were totally committed to this concept, but have had to, and that is just kind of wiggle around, uh, wiggle along the way, have wiggle room. Just because I just, I always say this, and Molly and Caitlin are like, here comes the thesaurus. I just feel like our dream and our plan is like a living, breathing thing, like a living, breathing personality, a living, breathing brand, a living, breathing, yeah. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. Wax on poetically. Um, and just, you've got to be willing to, to wiggle around along the way. Well, and also with that, when we first started our business, um, Within like our first two years, we had two kids in that crew, um, and we were we would do catering jobs for pharmaceutical reps and breakfasts and just anything, and we never said no, um, which the writer would probably cringe at, but we never said no to anything. Nothing was too small. There was no person that we didn't want to meet. There was, I mean, just everything. We just 
we wanted to be as immersed into everything as we possibly could. Well, and Caitlin seems really tickled about this idea, but let's be honest, I take on the jobs, I, I agree to them, and then I go down the street and knock on her door and tell her how beautiful she is and then tell her what I agreed to do. Yeah. For example, cat food we've done oh. somewhere along the way, dog biscuits, things yeah. like that, which are not our strong suit. And no, we I don't have a cat. won't do again, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know just, how to make it, so. Uh, one of my mom's favorite, um, one of my favorite things that mom always says is to be a mercenary for experience and just, I mean, just be nuts about it, take it all. And then as you become stronger and clearer in yourself and your brand, et cetera, um, you can you say, can no, say no, but know that you've done it and it's cool saying no, that kind of thing. And then um, just be willing, well, be willing to do anything like you just said. But I also think like as we um, get bigger, but to willing to do anything, even things you used to do that you, when you were doing them, you thought, I can't wait to not have to do it, but to always know like every level of what's going on in your business. So A, you can always do it, but also I think the people around you really respect that the ample piece notwithstanding. I don't know how to do any of your, the, the back end speak, but um, you know, just always know what's going on everywhere. And then last but not least, I added this in Sharpie this morning, bring lots of business cards. We brought three today. Yeah, that's probably not our best choice I brought of the some more, I brought like okay. five more. Yeah, we have three more. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be, that would be the only other thing. So that's all we got for you. We have no closing wrap, but we um, are happy to answer I don't know, questions, think, questions, comments, concerns, anything like yeah. that. How did you get inspiration for the food, for the recipes? Oh, the well, I, uh, the question was, how do I come up with this, the ideas for the recipes? And I only think in terms of food. Um, I'm a mom and a cook, but other than that, like I, I, I don't understand much else outside of that. Um, I love, we grew up, our whole family cooked. And I, my dad always told stories of his family, and it's always my goal to recreate memories for other people. I like to play with flavors and different things like that. But everything is an inspiration. I mean, like, how can I incorporate this ingredient? And um, in terms of my food style, I like to recreate memories, but I also am a mom with a, a culinary degree, and so I know how to work with a budget with minimal ingredients and minimal time with the mom aspect, but I know the classical techniques and different things like that, so. Um, I, every, I mean, I have notebooks on notebooks in my purse that are just like writing notes and um, all that stuff, so. Actually, it's kind of a fun like sociology experiment to be behind Caitlin at the grocery store because when she pulls out up her purse, first of all, it weighs 400 pounds, puts it up on the counter to pull out her uh, pay, payment. She pulls out a, a knife, a, sh a knife, um, a couple cooking books. A Sharpie, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not cool. She's to actively pull getting... out a knife and put it on the um, check portion. Yeah. But I've had too many events where I needed a knife and I forgot it, so I just always carry it. So <laughs> yes, but yeah. Oh, uh, well, this is embarrassing. I started off cooking in third grade. It was like when it really got serious because my mom said, if you don't like what I'm cooking, then make your own dinners. But usually that means like go make cocoa puffs. Well. I made my own mac and cheese recipe at, in third grade and I did chicken broth and slices of American cheese and cooked the pot. Like, it's been in me this whole time. Um, but, it, so I was a picky eater and so, and now I make all this amazing food for you but I can't wait right now to go home and have a peanut butter and jelly with apple jelly on white bread and creamy peanut butter. Like, I could have that at any moment. Um, in terms of my favorite things to make, I really, we've never in six years of business our third Thursday, our events for our clients, all that stuff, we've never done the same menu twice. So um, pretty much anybody who's ever been to one of our events, you have been a guinea pig for recipes that are on our sites. Um, so I'll cook recipes and then post them on our site. But my favorite thing to make over and over is homemade pasta, just because it's a family favorite. Um, for Father's Day, I made homemade bucatini. For like our mom's birthday, I'll do homemade gnocchi, um, things like that. So that's my favorite because like that's what my family loves. But um, do you but guys yeah. know what bucatini is? The like the long noodles with the holes in them. Literally, this is our whole family on Father's Day. She puts on the KitchenAid attachment, which was like Christmas for Caitlin to get that attachment, and we're all like, <laughs> <laughs> all of us as it comes through. Yeah. yeah. It's the little things in life. Yeah. So. Yeah. What role do other brands in your area play? Do you are, are you do you try and make yourself aware of them and then reconcile the brand that you're creating based off what they're doing, or do you really just try and stick with what you know and you know hope that your paths are diverging? 
Do you want to take it or do you want me to take it? How about we both? Okay. I think that, again, we kind of stick to what we know and we just try to keep doing better what we know how to do. However, we definitely are like always paying attention to what's going on around us. And honestly, I like even if it turns out that we're doing the same thing or something similar, it doesn't like that doesn't scare us. That actually gets us excited. I mean, why not join forces, especially in a place like Cincinnati where we're all tangled up? I think by the end of this breakfast, we're going to establish that we're related to half of you, right? I mean, that's so Cincinnati. So you might as well. Well, you know. um, so there's no better place in Cincinnati to build a business because everybody wants to help you. And there's always, I mean, the degrees of separation is even smaller. But we had to, we worked really hard on getting to know Cincinnati and everything for like the first three years. And then after three years, we felt, okay, we can try national brands and different things like that. Um, the way the world works now, especially with social media, is that brands need personalities, but brands can't afford to have a personality because it might conflict with just anything. Well, their legal departments, they're super It's heavy. overwhelming. Yes. Um, so brand, big brands like the Crafts, the Kroger's, all that stuff, they hire us to add a little um, rap, if you will, um, to their mm -hmm. company. We add the personality that they can't afford to, but there's less trouble that they could get in if we do it. So um, in terms of working with brands, that's how and we keep an ear to what's new on the market, what do we like to cook with, um, who's now on Twitter or Instagram, things like that. So, yeah, yeah, you had a question? Yeah, where do you see yourself in, say, two to three years? Oh, Jeezel. Um, two to three years, I have to think. Napping regularly. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, my goal, like I said, is the Food Network. That would be my, like, my dream goal. Um, and I know way too, we know way too much about the back end of the TV portion, um, but we would love to, I would love to have a reality show based in Cincinnati, um, just about how we get to feed people and play with food and how many amazing people that are hungry in Cincinnati. Um, and Cincinnati is such a great city and we all love reality TV here and um, so that's- We're not represented. Right, we're not represented. So we want to represent us. Which I don't know all if everybody's excited about. All but. these hungry. <laughs> But yeah, that is, that's where I see us in two to three years, is with the Food Network. I, I don't think. know what's going to happen in five minutes. I'll have to get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly will be along for the ride. Yes. Any other questions? Yeah. I have a question. I'm curious about your business structure, because I'm sure, well, I mean, I can speak for myself. I can come up with creative ideas, but it's the implementing that becomes difficult. So, Kelly, it sounds like you do all the sales. All no. The Kelly does no sales. Sorry. Is that right? Caitlin sells it and then I kind of... We're like a good checks and balances. So in terms of the creative piece, Kelly will hire us for a job and talk to the client and get um, like, what's your price range? What do you want the event to be? Da, 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 da. And then she comes back to me and I'll create a menu. And then Kelly will be like the older sister. How are we going to serve it? How are people going to eat it? What are they going to do with the shrimp tails? Different things like that. Yes. Um, and so were the checks and balance in terms of that with the greater thing? That's um, for the in-person events. I mean, that's right. what I manage. But in terms of the big accounts, we all kind of work on sales. But then Kelly is like, she watches over everything and keeps us organized and makes sure things are on track time-wise. So you're like the project manager. Oh, yeah. The yes. The that's whole title a great thing title. befuddles me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, I mean, I guess um, the thing is, is like the brands, they want to know, they want to know Caitlin. They don't, I mean, we end up all being a big family by the end of a campaign together or something, but it's Caitlin's voice and personality that they want, you know. Of course, we're all kind of working the, the, the tweets and that kind of thing. There are a lot of creative things that I don't tell Kelly about or like pickles that'll happen before an event and then it will just show up and it magically works out well that Kelly didn't know about, but yeah. <laughs> Did anyone see her tweet last night? Oh, well, I got burned a few times by the bacon that you all ate. But it, um, and I couldn't get the aloe off because I had bacon fat on my hand. So it was bad. But Kelly wasn't there to help. So. Which it has nothing yeah. to do with your question right. at all. Right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes. Molly is like, she oversees the website and makes sure that's always in tune, as well as she helps um, post things on Facebook and Twitter, as well as the contract work, the legal portion of it all. Here's the thing about Molly. She probably reads three books a week. She is just a voracious, like, she could tell you on page 13 of March 24th, Ad Age, yeah. what is going on at Craft. 
and what they should be doing and they should have been doing in May, that kind of thing. If it so wasn't, she's like yeah. a, she's constantly getting the information and then translating it to us who don't, like literally we all three speak a different language, which I'm sure you know because you're creative too and the business part, like making it all happen together can be a real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, if it wasn't time. for Molly, we would just be handing out cookies and talking to people. Like um, she is what made us a business. Yeah. I know. Molly will. So um, Caitlin goes after them because they want to talk to her. Kind of. Well, so, so I played soccer, and sales is like the most, the closest I can get to a soccer field in adult life. Like, just the whole like chasing somebody down, finding them, trying to get the ball from them. <laughs> um, that sounds like I'm a cat, too. But, um, <laughs> but once I get the sale and I figure out what they want, um, then I'll hand it over to Kelly, who will do the calendar, who will then hand the contracts over to Molly. But this here's the thing Molly does the contracts, but she also says we need to charge this to be able to live. Because literally, we love what we're doing, and we would just do it. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, that's kind the truth. Of. We would, yeah, we would just. I know that you love what you're doing, and you're. Can I tell everyone who you are? Margot Madison, her blog, and everything that she does, everything that you do is brilliant. So, hope you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's the truth. But you guys are all creative people in here. Oh, it's a creative morning. Yeah. Full you circle. guys are all doing good work. Yes, oh, dad. Jesus, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that dapper dresser in the background? <laughs> Mom and Dad are there every month. Thank, Thank you, Dad. Dad. <laughs> yes. That's very nice. Yes. Third Thursday, it's on our website. What have we been doing in Chicago? The IHA. Oh. So we're really cool that you oh, guys yeah, We did not invite our parents on purpose for yes. this. Thanks, Mom. And if you want, we'll be doing a tour of their refrigerator door later. We <laughs> could uh, stickers and magnets for everybody. Um, just in Chicago, we've been a part, for the last couple of years, we've been a part of the International Home and Houseware Show. So really, it's like where the, all these, if you're into housewares, which we so are, she pulled a knife out of her purse at the grocery store. Yeah. Um, it's where all the brands from around the world launch their latest and greatest, but also like all the celebrity chefs, all the people Caitlin grew up watching are all there. And we've gotten to be in the mix. We kind of lead the social media charge from the show. We don't kind of, the we do. The people that go to the show are the buyers and the sellers, but the people who are actually going to be at Target purchasing these pots and pans aren't allowed in. So we tweet and Facebook and all that good stuff about what we're seeing so that the at-home buyer can get excited about what's going to be in store. So, so that's our job there. Thank you, period. We're not calling on you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This was really a real treat. And how awesome to be here with the sunshine shining upon us. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, uh, Dean, wherever you are, and the boathouse, and, and Jeremy, and I'm sure we'll think of more people yeah. later and tweet you with their yeah. bacon fat fingers. I'm just so. kidding. Yeah, any other questions? Or? I have one final. So oh, yeah. What was it about Caitlin that you and Molly saw? <laughs> oh, that's fun. I'll tell you the exact moment. So, um, Caitlin went to culinary school right out of high school, which is in itself very non-traditional. Um, came back, she was 18 19, or yeah. 19 at the time, and started working in a market in Anderson, and um, just started doing classes, cooking classes. And she asked us, me and Molly, to just like kind of help her, literally like just as her sister and her girlfriend come in and clear the tables or you know help spread the word. Well, what happened was. People would pay in advance, not knowing Caitlin, and it would be like, you know, $65 a person or something like that, including all the food. They would literally get there and we'd be like, I think they were like babysitting me. Yeah, they'd be like, Thanks for nothing. Come again? Like, what did we just pay for? And what was so cool is that, 
Like she knows what she knows. She was fresh out of culinary school. She's got the the French, you know, the the French background, but um, she also has all these like really fresh ideas. And these uh, seasoned cooks would ask her questions, and she would either know the answer and dazzle them, or just say, "I don't know, but why don't we figure it out together?" or something like that. And by the end of the class, they would have all their recipes that she had written for the class and be scooting around the market buying all the groceries, you know. So Caitlin, or uh, Molly and I, well, the charities, and you know the whole deal. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> I, yeah. Thank you. I did not know I would be here. If you were to ask me seven years ago where would I be, I would have not said here. But I'm glad to be. <laughs> yeah. Have you um, ever had a very challenging, like, Why aren't there cameras filming us right now? This would be so great. That kind of night. Um, there's to be. Oh well, the thing with Third Thursday is we average between like 40 to 80 people, and sometimes people show up with allergies, unbeknownst to me, and I have to figure out wiggle room. How do I make this menu that I've been working on for the last 36 hours all of a sudden gluten free and what have things touched and all that stuff. So people will do that keeps me on my toes. But um, we've done jobs. We did a job across the river once in the winter and there was no running water and I forgot my knives. Um, the pipes had frozen. And so we're like out there with mini water bottles just trying to wash things and um, but and then like one of our first really big jobs was over 100 people and there wasn't a kitchen and we were between the girls and the boys bathroom. So um, it like was with, a bang nightclub. Does anyone remember that? I never would have been there if someone hadn't hired us. I mean, and I was underage, so I really wouldn't have been there. But um. <laughs> We literally did um, lamb chops for 100 people on a card table between the men's room and the... Just on a flat top grill. So That's my go-to. The thing one. with our website, it's our, like, it's our base. It, everything comes back to our website. So um, the thing that I pride myself in terms of people who can view our website, I know how to work with minimal equipment. I know how to work with off ingredients and I know how to cater to different allergies because we feed so many different people um, so whether you're on a budget or experimental or experience anything like that you can come to our website and you can kind of play around at all the different recipes we've done so so yeah and the recipes for the pop-tarts and the honey cayenne bacon are on our site already so if you're hungry and want to make that at home you can do that too so so yeah thank you April yeah Uh, How much we time had a few got? come to Jesus Talks. <laughs> no, um... This morning? No. Well, oh, I'm just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> just anti... Well, it gets even weirder. So we work together, our kids are in the same schools, and we live a street away from each other. Like, it's weird Italian things occurring, but, um... We're not married to the same man, though. No. No. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but... I actually love it. I love working. So the okay. five of us is, it's my sister, her best friend since I was three, and then our two cousins. And I, no matter how mad or frustrated I can get, I know that they're going to be at Sunday night dinner. Like, we have to work things out, and I can say whatever I need to say. And they can call me out when I'm not good. And, you know, like, but she's always going to be my sister and who just happens to be my business partner. So I feel like we maintain the sister thing first and then business comes second. But and that no makes mistake. it better. I mean, we have some time. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We're still sisters. Yeah. So. Yeah. Not a lot. Jesus. I'll probably pull her hair this weekend <laughs> if that's what you're wondering. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Well, it's really in. No. Well, here's the okay. A so the question. Specific plan for Food Network. Is yeah. The question. The pickle is that I don't want to go on like the next Food Network star because I don't want to be like Caitlin, season fourteen, seventh runner up, and then that's all I can be. Um, so I'm going big. I mean, we're not messing around. We're gonna. Yes. Um, so the way the whole Food Network works is that you need to find a production company that will back you and then the Food Network and all those channels buy it from the production company. And the biggest dilemma is that usually they'll only buy one or two episodes and it's hard to tell how well a season's going to go based on one or two episodes. So um, right now we have a production company and we actually have a contact within the Food Network production company and we're going to New York so fingers crossed things go well. But um, the thing that's hard is they're very narrow-minded in terms of right now it's reality television or competition shows. And if you don't fit into those two, then 
your SOL. So, um, and also they want drama. They want, we don't really pull our, each other's hair. Like they're not gonna see that. They might see us um, being moms and that's the biggest drama of the day. But, um, so yeah, I, I think in terms of, it goes back to what we're saying, stay true to ourselves. We're willing to wait if we can be ourselves on TV. I don't wanna be a real housewife. I don't wanna be any of that. I wanna still be Kelly and Caitlin cooking food, feeding people in Cincinnati, so. So yeah. our idea for the show too is like, kind of goes back to Margot. like, I mean, just not so much, like a show that happens, a show about us building a business that happens to be about food. Do you know what I mean? Not, definitely not like a stand and stir and, and not necessarily just a food show, but about us building a business and raising a family that happens to be about food, you know? I mean, you are welcome to, for, to give us feedback. We're going to New York in August, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I know. Have we met the Barefoot Contessa? It's actually funny because all these like famous chefs and stuff, they're normal people, but then there are some that are like just on a different level that aren't exactly how you were hoping that they would be. Um, no, I haven't met her, so I can't say her. that. Um, and I don't want to badmouth people, but there are just some people that are not exactly what you I'll think. I'll tell you who's so awesome. Oh, I was like, okay, go. No, this person is so awesome. Curtis Stone. You guys know who he is? He is Australian. Um, Australian um, or English, yeah. I think he's Top Australian. Yeah. Top Chef Masters. But also, didn't he have a show like 10 years ago that was yeah, like... Yeah, the was, er, er, Take Home Chef. Take Home Chef. He's awesome. You should definitely buy and I mean, we so have nothing in Buddy it. And so is Buddy Blastro, the cake boss. Yep. We like spent a lot and he praised his wife for helping his line and he had his daughter cooking cannolis and all this stuff so um there's yeah. a real deal yeah any other questions oh i'll answer that do it because i feel like i'm kind of the um where, wherever John is, we had this conversation earlier, where like I, in our business, I have to speak Caitlin's creative language and then the, the business piece of it, which are two different, I mean, it becomes like an interpreter job, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know. And so we, in terms of deadlines and stuff, I mean, sorry, we're just strategic in, you know, giving ourselves plenty of time. And then maybe Caitlin thinks the deadline is another time. But then I'm just teasing, ish. But, um, but then the other thing to, what was the other part of the question? Like, having, setting boundaries with oh. clients and making that work. So there's, that's interesting. I was actually thinking about this this morning when I was getting ready because the cliche, like, you know, the, the customer's always right. I mean, that never goes out of style. That is, that's true, period. Next sentence, um, we are not willing to give up our brand. We're just not. We work too hard to establish our personality, again, to be true to ourselves, on and on. And we are not willing to, we are excited about working with, the, with any size brand, but we're not gonna sell our souls to. We, you know, I really, we really feel like each member of our audience, whether it be, um, you know, a fan, a follower, whatever, or someone who just reads us in the paper, that um, literally, figuratively, virtually, we have like reached out, shaken that person's hand, and kind of nurtured that relationship in our own way, and we're just not willing to be agenda pushers, you know, we're very transparent all the time with our audience. And so this happens all the time in F and I, our, um, our foodies night in, our chat that Deba helped us get started, um, our Twitter party, when we work with brands, which we do often and it's so fun, they want, ev sometimes they want, and when I say they, like I envision literally like corporate people who have no clue about what it takes to build a social media presence, they want Every, tw every 140 character chunk to be, here's a link to the recipe that we made with this. You know what I mean? There's no, and I will push back to the. Well, to and the also bitter. about the balance, I think about our business, none of us are afraid to work. Like I woke up at four in the morning, but I did it because I want you guys to have homemade pie dough and lovingly made pop tarts, you know? Um, and we know, we, we, I mean, we're cognitive of what we have started and what we need to do. and. Um, just because we're starting it around our families, I will wake up at the ass crack of dawn to, so that then I can be a mom and then during nap time I'll send emails and after bedtime. So 
as long as like we keep an open communication of this is realistic and this is da da da. So, yeah. So the idea of the like <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Go. The rap is always simmering. <laughs> Not what I thought you were going to say. The rap came first, and then Jeremy asked us to be a part of it today. I'm just kidding. No. We were just waiting for a room full of strangers to bust a move. We no. went to Ursuline, and if you want any power at Ursuline, you had to perform a skit. Or just, Make and how laugh. many times do you get to do that as an adult? So we just thought that. And also the fur coat that I wore, my father wore on dates with my mother. So it's like a long, it's a whole family affair that, right, exactly. So, so really it's the fur coat that started it all. Thank you for asking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Any did, other questions? Did you have a question? A restaurant is like, after you have so many cocktails, you think you have the best restaurant idea and you're gonna just be the next McDonald's. I would rather have 17 more children than open a restaurant because you need as much care. And the most successful restaurants, the owners are there. Every like single Dean second. Gregory, for him to be here this morning is ridiculous because he was here until the wee hours of the morning, I'm sure. So, but we're standing at Montgomery Inn, which is an institute in Cincinnati. So, um, and also with a restaurant, I don't, I wouldn't have the same freedoms that I have now in terms of always changing the menu. Um, our dad has this brilliant idea for a restaurant called Sunday Dinner, which we do already, and we <laughs> only serve three things. So um, just maybe if you could talk to my father about opening a restaurant, not me, I'm not interested. Bring in some it. Miller Lite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it, it, you need, and I would want to, like, it's important to, I'm good at delegating what I can't do, but what I can do, I want to do, and I just, my life isn't built around a restaurant. We so. love restaurants, <laughs> but, it, and every time we leave one, we're like, oh my God, thank God we don't have bricks and mortar. You know, having to be have there. people come to you and be there. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm just curious, how much of your income comes from catering? Like, you still do a lot um, of Almost catering, zero. We cater for people we know and love, but it's not our bread and butter anymore. So, like, if you or you or you ask us, we're available. So here's just to like give you an idea of like. So we just did a campaign with um, Kraft, Kraft, which I think is really indicative of what how we make money right now. So they just launched a new a uh, new line. It's called Fresh, Fresh Take, Take, which is. It is like the shaken bacon, shake and bake of 2013. 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all the, you, you know. You no, know, it's the breadcrumbs and the cheese, and then you just add the chicken or whatever. Okay, so um, we partnered up with them, and they have a lot of great, they're very forward thinking and have lots of cool ideas, and we're open to a lot of cool things. They um, put together like three or four food trucks that they sent out all over the country that were, and really were pushing the, um, the social media piece. So they came to us. And um, our campaign with them started with, Caitlin did a third Thursday using their Fresh Take line as inspiration. So we do, at third Thursday, we do nine courses of food, all in Petaphor proportions. So it's like a taster menu kind of thing. Um, and every course, it's roughly like, we, this is how we think of it, three appetizers, three main, three dessert, but it's all in Petaphor proportions. Anyway. So sweet and savory. Caitlin did every course included at least one of the fresh takes. They have nine in their line, and so every course included a different fresh take. So this is where our campaign started. So um, we promoted uh, Third Thursday. We filled the room with people who wanted to try the food. While people were there, they were tweeting away about hashtag fresh take, what they're having, um, sending out pictures, that kind of thing of what they've gotten to eat. Then. Caitlin writes all the recipes, and then they own the recipes. They're on our site. They're on their site. Um, they get all the photos with it, and then the whole, all the chatter around it. Then um, while they were driving through Cincinnati in their fresh take truck, we went there and again did the strategic tweeting and tasting and put our kids in a lot of fresh take pictures. Um, <laughs> and then that particular campaign culminated with a Foodies Night In, our Monday um, Twitter, handle. Twitter chat chat. Um, so it was like four weeks of, you know. Fresh take. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you all.